So in section 2.3, we're going to um, find equations of lines given different scenarios, different bits of information about an equation of a line. We'll use that information to find an equation. And generically, there's two kind of strategies for finding the equation for any line. And I'll teach the one that my nephew prefers that I don't prefer first, and then we'll do the one that I think is better, but you can pick and choose. So I'll teach you two different ways to find equations for lines. So um, there's one equation for a line that we've been exposed to so far, the y equals mx plus b slope-intercept form. Of course, when a line is written in slope-intercept form, the number in front of the x is the slope, and the number after the plus or possibly minus sign is the y-coordinate of the y-intercept. If I give you some information about an equation of a line and I ask you to find an equation, I can use this slope, this strategy. I can use this equation and the knowledge that I can get from that equation to do it. How do I do that? Well, let's do this example. It says use the slope-intercept formula, which is y equals mx plus b, formula, use the slope intercept form of the equation of a line with slope 6 passing through the point negative 2, 5. Use that information along with the y equals mx plus b form to find an equation of a line that has a slope of 6 that passes through the point negative 2, 5. Pretty easy to do. Um, first is First thing I need to do is identify the slope. Super easy to identify the slope. It was given to me as 6. Second thing I need to identify uh, the point. Super easy to do. Third is where the algebra comes in. I'm going to take the numbers that are given to me and plug them in the y equals mx plus b formula. Specifically, I'm going to plug x equal to negative 2, which is the x coordinate of the point y equal to 5, which is the y-coordinate of the given point, and m equal to 6, which is the slope, plug it into the y equals mx plus b formula and solve for, for b. So I put 5 in for y, 6 in for m, negative 2 in for b, negative 2 in for x, left the b out here alone. I got 5 equals negative 12 plus b, I added 12 to both sides and got b equal to 17. Now, I'm going to use the y equals mx plus b form of the line, the slope-intercept form of the line. I'm going to replace the m with 6, which was given to me, and the b with 17, which was what I computed, and that's the equation of the line that passes through the point negative 2, 5 that has a slope of 6. That's using the y equals mx plus b formula or the slope intercept formula. So the first few problems, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're just going to do more of this. So I'm going to find the equation of the line that passes through the point 4, 7 with a slope of negative 5. I'm going to write my answer in y equals mx plus b form. I'm just going to use the y equals mx plus b formula to do it. What am I going to do? Into the y equals mx plus b formula, I'm going to plug negative 5 for m. I'm going to plug 4 for x. I'm going to plug y for 7. And I'm going to solve for b. And then I'm going to write my answer. So let me start with the algebra part. I'm going to use the y equals mx plus b formula. I'm going to plug 7 in for y, negative 5 for m, 4 for x. I'm going to leave the b alone to be solved for. Algebraically, this gives me 7 equals to negative 20 plus b. I'm going to add 20 to both sides and get 27 equals to b. This is all the algebra that I can do. To get my answer, I'm into the y equals mx plus b equation. I'm going to put negative 5 in place of the m because that's given and I'm going to put positive 27 in place of the b and my answer is going to be y equals negative 5x 
plus 27. That's the equation of the line that's going to have a slope of negative 5, and if I graphed it, it would pass through the point 47. A few more of these, and then we'll move on to the other way that you can find an equation for the line, for a line given the same information. So same strategy here, same instructions. I'm going to plug in m equal to 11, x equal to negative 2, y equal to negative 5, into the formula y equals mx plus b. I'll go negative 5 for y equals 11 for m times negative 2 for x plus b. This gives me negative 5 equals negative 22 plus b. I'll add 22 to both sides and get 17 equal to b. Eventually, I'm going to make one or more mistakes in this video because I'm doing math without my calculator. Bad idea on a test. Um, even if you're comfortable doing the math in your head, using your calculator, way better idea than trying to fly blind here. So now that I did my algebra, I'm going to write my answer. My equation is going to be y equal to 11x plus 17. The 11 was given to me, the 17 my algebra gave me. One more of these, and then we'll move on to the other formula that I can use to find my equation for a line that I only use. I don't use this strategy, but we should certainly can do it all day. Um, so, for number 6, I'm going to use the y equals mx plus b formula. I'm going to do my algebra to solve for b. I'm going to plug 5 in for y, 2 thirds in for, X, for m, 1 in for x, and then plus b. Heck, let's do 5, because yours is harder. Let's do 5. So, for 5, I'm going to go... 4 for y equals to 3 fourths for m times 5 for x plus b. Now I need to be able to multiply 3 quarters times 5. It's just going to be 15 over 4, but let me show you if you couldn't do it. If I wanted to go 3 over 4, put it in a fraction, do 3 divided by 4 times 5, math and enter twice, that gives me 15 over 4. When you're multiplying a fraction by an integer, you just multiply the numerator by that integer. So now I've got fractions to deal with. Let me rewrite the 4 in a fraction form to make it so the algebra is easier to follow. So the 4, which wasn't a fraction, I can write it as a fraction by writing it over 1. I'm going to get it to have the same denominator of 4 because when I'm going to go to my next step, I'm going to need common denominators. So I'm going to multiply that 4 over 1 by 4 over 4 and get 16 over 4 equals 15 over 4 plus b. And now I'm going to minus 15 over 4, minus 15 over 4. When you're subtracting, the denominators of the fractions have to be the same. When you're subtracting, the denominators don't change. On the left-hand side, I'm just going to go 16 minus 15 and get 1. Leave the 4. On the right-hand side, I'm canceling, and you get B. If you wanted to, I could have just done this. I could have just did 4 and then minus 15 over 4. Hit equals and then math and enter twice to get that 1 fourth. If you're not comfortable doing fractions nicely with your with you know by hand use your calculator I have no issues with that so for an answer I'm gonna plug in for number five this is again this is not number six I punted on number six for the answer for number five be preceding the X I'm gonna put the slope of three-fourths after the X I'm gonna put positive one-fourth if it was a negative I'd have minus there but since they're all positive I put a positive that's the first strategy, and so often when students use this strategy, 
they get to this point and they don't do the last step to write the equation. They'll write an answer of B, but not write the equation. So that's kind of the flaw. When we're doing the problems one after another, it's harder to forget that's what you need to do. But in when we're out of this section and we're finding equation of lines in the future in this class, so, so many students use this strategy and don't do the last step to put the M in front of the X and put the B after the X. So the other strategy is the one that I only use, and it's using the point slope formula. The point slope formula is, tells me, the, so the point slope form of an equation of a line was slope M and containing the point X1, Y1 is Y minus Y1 equals M times X minus X1. That is an equation, we call this the point-slope form. So there's two forms for a line. There's the point-slope form, there's actually more than two, but there's two that are, I think are useful. There's a point-slope form, which is this, y minus y1 equals to m times x minus x1. That's usually what I use to create my equation. And then the other equation is the slope-intercept form. That's usually how I write my answer, even if I'm not using that equation to get my answer. So we've beaten on this y equals mx plus b form. Now let's move to the point-slope form to f use it to find an equation of a line if I know a point and a slope. And I'm gonna, this is from my Math 114. I don't think I need to hold your hand quite as tight because you've probably done this before. So let's move right into the problems. The instructions ask me to use the point-slope formula. The y minus the y-coordinate of the given point equals the slope times x minus the x-coordinate of the given point. Use the point-slope formula to find the equation of the line and then write your answer in slope-intercept form super easy to do and this gives you directly the answer. What I'm going to do into the formula in for m I'm going to plug 8 in place of the subscripted x sub 1 I'm going to plug negative 2 for the subscripted y sub 1 I'm going to plug negative 9. This will give me exactly the same answer if I use the y equals mx plus b formula and plug m for 8 x for negative 2, y for negative 9. The strategy that I use for problems 1 through 6 gives the same answers. But let me do this way. So this way I'm going to go y minus the y coordinate of the point, which is y minus negative 9, equals the slope times x minus the x coordinate of the point, which is negative 2. Got some double negatives that I should make positive. Can make my left hand side y plus 9. Make my right-hand side 8 times x plus 2. I'm going to clear the parentheses on the right-hand side. By distributing the 8 through the parentheses, I'm going to go 8 times x and get 8x. 8 times 2 and get positive 16. And now I'm just going to subtract 9 from both sides. And this is going to directly give me my answer. Rather than having to do algebra and then plug components into my answer, that's going to be the equation that I need. So the point-slope formula is a way to go from the information that's given straight to the answer without having to use the information, generate some numbers, and plug those numbers into the answer. And students generally don't make as many mistakes. They don't forget to um, write the answer correctly because the algebra just kind of forces that to happen. That's why I like this method better. But my nephew is a student at GCC this semester. He doesn't like this method. He uses the ones I did for problems one through six. So if you're more comfortable with one method as opposed to another, use it. You don't have to master both. But most instructors will show this as the method. I'll do the same thing for problem 10. Find the equation of the line using the y minus y1 equals the slope times x minus x1. And for the y... I'm going to plug in 1, and for the m, I'm going to plug negative 6, and then for the x1, I'm going to plug 3. So this is using the point-slope formula, and I'm going to take that point-slope formula and solve 
for y and get my answer. I didn't have any double negatives to contend with, but I do have a parenthesis to clear. I'm going to multiply negative 6 times x and negative 6 times negative 3 to clear my parentheses. My right-hand side will be negative 6x plus 18. I'm going to add 1 to both sides. And the answer to problem 10, the equation that's going to have a slope of negative 6 that passes through the point 3, 1 is going to be y equals negative 6x plus 19. Fractions are not our friends, but we'll figure this out here. So, same deal here. Same instructions. I'm using the point-slope formula, which is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1 to find the equation of the line with slope negative two-thirds. So, in for the m, I'd plug negative two-thirds with the x-coordinate of the point 8 and y-coordinate of a point 3. So, I do y minus the y-coordinate of the point equals the slope times x minus the x-coordinate of the point. Fractions are not my friend. On the right-hand side, I'll clear the parentheses by doing negative 2 thirds times x and getting negative 2 thirds x. And then negative 2 thirds times negative 8. When I'm multiplying a fraction by an integer, I multiply the numerator by that integer. I'll multiply negative 2 times negative 8 and get positive 16 and leave it over 3. Now I'm going to minus 16 over 3 from both sides. And I'm going to laze out and do my calculator. But if I wanted to, this would be negative 25 over 3. But I'll pretend I can't do that in my head. And on this right-hand side, I'm going to go minus 3 using the minus in the bottom row of the calculator. Minus using the minus by the plus sign. 16 divided by 3. Ugh. Shoot, that's not even right. I was so worried about doing math in my head. I'm solving for y here. To solve for y, I want a plus 3 and plus 3 digit. On the left-hand side, I should have been writing y. On the right-hand side, I'm going to get positive 25 over 3 because this is 16 over 3 plus 9 over 3. And let me do it on my calculator. If you can do it in your head like that, that's the best way to do it. But when I do things in my head, boy, I do make mistakes. So 16 over 3 plus 3. Math, double enter, gives me the 25 over 3. This is the answer. y equals negative 2 thirds x plus 25 over 3. So, what if I don't have the slope and I have two points? That's the next kind of problem. In order to find an equation of a line, I need a slope. And two points is not enough. So problems 13 through 16, I want to find an equation of a line. I don't care if you use the first strategy using the y equals mx plus b approach or the second strategy using the y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. But we need a slope. So for problem 14, I want to find an equation of the line. I want to write my answer in slope-intercept form. First, I'm going to find the slope. by taking the y-coordinate of the second point, which is 2, minus the y-coordinate of the first point, which is 5, divided by the x-coordinate of the second point, which is 6, minus the x-coordinate of the first point, which is 3. So it's going to be negative 3 over 3, which is negative 1. I'm going to do this two ways, with using either point. I'm going to use the y equals mx plus b way, if that's what you prefer. And for that, I'm going to use the slope of negative 1 and the point 3, 5. And I'm going to use the way I prefer, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And I'm going to use the slope of negative 1, and I'm going to use the point of 6, 2. For either method, it doesn't matter which point you, you use. For, and it, it doesn't matter which method. Methods give the same answer as long as I know how to do them. For the y equals mx plus b method, I would plug in 5 for y, negative 1 for m, 3 for x, and then get plus b. This gives me 5 equals negative 3 plus b 
I add 3 to both sides and get 8 equals to B. That's not my answer. To get the answer, I need to use the Y equals MX plus B formula and in for the M, I'm going to plug the negative 1 that my algebra gave me. And in for B, I'm going to plug the 8. Of course, that negative 1 can be suppressed. And I could have just written Y equals negative X plus 8. Those are both correct. I kind of like seeing the negative 1. Honestly, it makes me make less mistakes. Those are both correct. This algebra should give me the same equation. Let me get that equation by going y minus the y coordinate of the point that I picked 2 equals the m negative 1 times x minus the x coordinate of the point that I picked 6. Different formula, different point, same answer. So this is going to give me y minus 2 and then I'll clear the parentheses. I'll go negative 1 times x is negative 1x. Negative 1 times negative 6 is positive 6. Add 2 to both sides and I get y equals negative 1x plus 8, exactly the same. So it doesn't matter which strategy that you use, if you like this strategy better or you like that strategy better, I'll almost exclusively use this strategy because it's what I prefer. Both strategies work the same way, both give the same answers, doesn't even matter which point that you use. It's completely, completely forgiving. One more of these and then we'll move on to parallel lines and perpendicular lines. Um, 16, let me do the slope. Slope is going to be 6 minus 9, subtract the y's in the numerator, over 7 minus 3, subtract the x's in the denominator. My slope is negative 3 fourths. I'm going to use the slope of negative 3 fourths and just because it's written first, the point 39, it just doesn't matter which point I use. Um, and I just like this way better. So I'm going to use the y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Your work doesn't need to look anything like mine. You can still get the same answer. You could use a different point. You could use the different formula. So using my strategy, I'm going to get y minus 9 Clearing the parentheses, I get negative 3 quarters x. And then when I multiply the negative 3 quarters times the negative 3, I multiply these negative 3's and get positive 9 over 4. Now I'm going to add 9 to both sides and get y equals negative 3 fourths x. This is 9 fourths plus 36 over 4, which is 45 over 4. On my calculator, 9 divided by 4 plus 9, math and enter twice is 45 over 4. Another way by hand to do 9 over 4 plus 9 is to think of this as 9 over 4 plus 9 over 1. Make the 9 a fraction. Multiply it by 4 over 4. We'll get 9 over 4 plus 36 over 4. And that's going to be 9 plus 36 over 4, which is 45 over 4. I can just do that in my head, but use your calculator if you know you don't do fractions well. So the next few problems, I'm supposed to find the equations of lines parallel to lines. Um, not particularly hard because we know what anytime I go to find an equation for a line, I need a point and a slope. 17 through 20 says, find the slope intercept form of an equation of a line passing through the point that's given parallel to the given line. Shoot, this is going to be easy for me. Anytime I try to find an equation for a line, I need a slope and I need a point. Well, the point is definitely 2, negative 5. The reason we did the last section, the 2.2b, is just for this kind of problem. Here, my slope of my given line is m equal to 9. And of course, the slope of all lines parallel to the given line
is m equal to 9 because parallel lines have the same slope. We did a chunk of problems in section 2.2b precisely because I knew this was coming up and this is the tricky part of these problems. When we're dealing with finding equations of parallel and perpendicular lines, we have to reason out, logic out the slope. And that's what we did the last section just to get that logic down. Now I have everything I need. I have the slope because I'm finding a line that's parallel and all lines parallel to the a line that has a slope of 9 also have a slope of 9. And I'm going to use the strategy that I prefer, but you can use the other strategy if you don't prefer this. You should get the same answer. It's just that your work won't follow at all. It'll look completely different than mine. But you'll get exactly the same answer if you don't make a mistake and I don't make a mistake. If one of us makes a mistake, then our answers won't match. And it's probably going to be me that makes that mistake as opposed to you. I get that for an answer, just going y minus negative 5 equals a slope 9 times x minus 2. Make my double negative positive, clear the parentheses on the right, subtract 5 from both sides. Ugh, button up against that 30 minutes. So every time I'm trying to find an equation for a line, I need a point and a slope. The point for this line is definitely going to be 10, negative 6. In this line, the slope of the given line is m equal to 3 fifths. It's in slope intercept form. The number in front of the x is the slope. So I should know from the last section the slope of all lines parallel, this is parallel, that means parallel, parallel to the given line is exactly the same because parallel lines have the same slopes. Because I'm trying to find a line parallel, it has to have a slope of 3 over 5. Have my point, have my slope, let me go y minus the y coordinate, double negative so I make a parenthesis, equals the slope times x minus the x coordinate, double negative on the left hand side, I'll make a positive, on the right hand side I'm going to go 3 fifths times x, and then I'm going to do 3 fifths times negative 10. Lots of ways to do this by hand. Let me just do the way I've been doing. I'm going to multiply the numerator by that number, leave the denominator. So that comes out to negative 30 over 5, and that fraction reduces to negative 6. So on the right hand side, I should get negative 6. I could have canceled this 5 with that 2, made the 5 a 1, made the 10 a negative 2, and got 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. I could. On my calculator, do 3D divided by 5 times negative in the bottom row of the calculator, 10, to get that negative 6. Lots of ways to do it. I don't care how you do it. And now I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides. Since those 6s have the same signs, they don't cancel. They only would cancel if they have opposite signs. So my answer for problem 20 is y equals 3 fifths x minus 12. I think I should do a part two. I'm buttoned up against 30 minutes. I think I have like 14 minutes left, but I don't want a 45 minute video. So let me pause this and we'll do a part two.